Good morning, Grace family. I am Evelyn, your theater arts pastor, and it is a blessing to spend a little bit of your morning with you. So I wanna dive right in to John 15, five through seven, a familiar verse that we've all heard before, and I pray that the Holy Spirit reads us and um, as we read this scripture. So I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. So previous to these verses, we see God referred to as the vine keeper, the vine tender. And we see Jesus modeling submission to God's tending and pruning because God is the vine tender and Jesus is the vine. So we see Jesus' submission to God's will in the garden, right? And so Jesus is modeling for us what submission to being in the vine looks like as we are the branches, Jesus is the vine, and God is our ultimate tender and pruner. And what's so cool is that John is referring to the term pruning in this, which is a reference to cleansing. So just isn't scripture so amazing? Now abide here, we know Pastor Chip says all the time, God's word Every word is important. And if a word is repeated, we wanna pay attention to that. So when I read the scripture, we heard abide several times mentioned, right? So abide is a reference to the Old Testament as the verb form, a dwelling place. So when God promised to dwell with Israel, his obedient covenant people, Jesus is referring to that here. So we want to pray that in this way, as we abide with Jesus, we become what we behold, right? So the more that we abide with Jesus and God's word abides in our heart, the more that we can have ruthless trust when we say, Lord, I want what you want more than what I want. So um, in prayer as a hunger, Edward Farrell lists three things as the greatest obstacles to trust. And they are amnesia, inertia, and manana. So amnesia is forgetting who God says he is, what God has said, how he's acted in the past. Inertia is getting so caught up in the things of this world or what you're doing that you lose sight of the person who is directing your steps. And then manana is the Spanish word for tomorrow. So that just means we're not present with how God is present with us in these moments. So in this, the importance of abide is so prevalent because abiding is an action word. It's, it's something we constantly and continually do. So as amnesia, inertia, and manana threaten to distract us, it's also important that we abide. So. In this, it also made me think of Luke 2, 49, when Jesus was 12 and his parents forgot him in the synagogue and then came back and they were so worried and they were like, well, Jesus, we were so anxious for where you were. And he says, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? So in the same way, when we abide with Jesus, we can be about his prayers and about his business as we pray. And so I just wanna invite us into that family, that we can have ruthless and reckless trust that God will answer our prayers, as it says in verse seven, because we are aligned with the heart of Jesus and what he wants. So will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to dwell, to be, abiding with you constantly, Lord. May you as your Old Testament people become a dwelling place for you, Lord. May you guide our actions. May our prayers, our thoughts, what we want be so in line with what you want, Lord, that it just comes naturally. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that continues to guide, shape, and direct us. We thank you and we love you. And all this we pray in your name. Amen.